Hello, was we're here back with another video and today we're going to be doing another tier list this one on the traveling merchant shop The traveling merchant shop is a daily shop that shows up throughout the day It its stock changes each day and there are a variety of different items that you can Buy from the shop. So we're going to go ahead and rank all of those items using a tier list So we're going to start off with the ancient effigy which slots itself right into the S tier This is because it gives a total of 138 K XP if you have some 99s at a cost of 1 mil GP You're looking at about 7 to 8 GP per XP Which is very great for free XP that takes no time to use the anima crystal is a solid purchase if you need the 500 reputation and it's a great kickstart to maxing out your first reputation to get the double drop rate so you can camp that boss to get max reputation and all the other bosses. Personally, I did that for Vindicta where I bought Anima Crystals and did bounties until I had max reputation. Then I finished the Vindicta log which gave me enough seals to do the to get max reputation in Grigorovich. And then that Grigorovich log gave me enough seals to get max reputation in both Hellweir and Twins. So with that, we're going to put it in the A tier. It would be an S tier item, but it's kind of useless once you get to the point where you have max reputation like I am now. The three D&D tokens have different value, and I find it hard to do my dailies every day. And the excess amount of daily tokens I get from daily keys and the mom meant that I rarely ever ran out of tokens, so I never purchased it. But if you do run out of daily tokens, this would be a good purchase on a GP per XP scale, which slots it into the B tier rank. For the weekly tokens, there's really only one worth doing, and that's Herbie Werby, but you're likely to also have excess weekly tokens just sitting there, which is also why I get slotted into the B tier. However, the monthly D&D token is an S tier item because there are three ones worth doing, Troll Invasion, God Statues, and Oyster, and you're almost always not going to have enough to reset all three of them. Death Touch Start is going into S tier, but I'm going to hazard some caution with this. If you don't do telestreaking or pushing, or you're unable to get to the final boss of Elite Dungeon 3, the Ambassador, I would heavily advise against buying it. The 5 mil cost on average will not be won back by something like Nex or KK, as the average drop there is more in the order of 1 to 2 mil, so it's a bit of a rigged game even though sometimes you could come out ahead. The only other use of the darts that I can think of is for those that struggle with some quest bosses, some of them can be killed by darts, so take advantage when you can. The Dungeoneering wildcard is also slotting itself into B tier. It's pretty good to store up for your large occult warps when you go 5x5, five five, as the extra 50% XP can make a big difference, and getting an average of 2 purchase means is only 250k each, and if you get 50k extra XP from that floor, that's only 5 GP per XP, which is very nice. Harmonic Dust is just going to go right into the S tier. To max out your tools, you'll need 12,000 of the dust to make the hatchet, mattock, and pickaxe. And then on top of that, you'll need another 5,000 for the blessed flask. So that's 17,000 total. And you only get about 700 Harmonic Dust per hour. So each purchase saves about an hour of training at Harmonic Dust at the cost of 2 mil, which is very worth it as you can almost always make more money somewhere else. The Metafight gift offerings had their time to shine, but they are done now. With how easy the reputation gain is with Obelisk, they aren't needed for reputation, and opening them up generally leads to a loss. F tier. Silverhawk Down is also an F tier item, which might be a bit of a shock, but the average feather cost from buying it is 20k GP. And if you look at the GE price right now, it's about 17k, and it's been below 20k for the longest time. This is one of those items that when it was released, it was cheaper to buy with the down because feathers were like 23, 24k each. So it's always a bit of a money save when you went there. But now that feathers have crashed so much, um, Jagex should probably look into lowering the price so it's still a bit of a profit. But for now, it just sticks into F tier. Taiji 2 is going into A tier as it heavily speeds up the time to get the Sandy title and therefore trim comp. However, if you aren't interested in either of those items, there is no point to the purchase as your Uncharted Islands and um, Elite Dungeon 1 should cover all the Taiju 2 and Chime cost you need. So, that, so with that, I can't justify it as an S tier item because a large majority of the player base won't using it, bringing it down to A tier. In total, you'll need about 350 Taijutsu for trim, so you'll have a lot of purchases there. Uh, unfocused damage enhancers are going right into the garbage tier that is F. They last for so little and do so little that it's just not worth even thinking about them. 
The only use I ever got out of them was setting a fast time at Kiln with the Fight Caves Enhancer. But that's it. You can do the same at QBD, but as a whole, they're not worth it. On the other hand, the unfocused reward enhancers are slightly better, but they just cost too much at 10 mil. They provide double progress to a bunch of trim requirements like Chimpice and Chompies for a set amount of time. That gives it the slightly better D rank, but unless you're really rolling around in GP, don't bother with buying it. This is another thing where if you're not rolling around in GP, don't bother it. The full Trisky is just too expensive. You can expect about 300k in loot on average for the Trisk, which essentially means you're paying 1.7 mil for an elite clue. Not worth it, but some clue people just can't help themselves, so it gets a slightly better D tier. The Gooby Burial Charms might just be the worst items on here. They give 50 to 150 reputation based on the size, but that reputation is pretty easy to get to max from something like doing your Nemi Forest every day, where you also get XP out of it. And once you're max rep, they turn into techie, which is a net loss in terms of the amount they cost to the amount they give. Gift of the Reaper is an S tier item, and it's going to stay in the S tier as long as incomplete hydrixes stay above 18.7 mil, as that's the point where it's profit to buy it. And with the new alchemical hydrix jewelry coming out, and using and the fact that they use hydrix to repair, or alchemical hydrix to repair, I can see that being true for basically the rest of the game's existence. So this Gift of the Reaper is essentially just a free like 1 mil every time you buy it. Pulse cores are great, but the GP per XP is not. It's, it works out to be about 15 to 16 GP per XP, which is still better than something like Treasure Hunter, but not as good as the rest of the items here, which makes um, our final tier have an entrant with it going into a C tier. Now we're moving into some of the deep sea um, fishing enhancers, and the first one is the Barrel of Bait. Uh, it's essentially terrible. You're essentially paying 50k to get one extra fish, as the boost only lasts 3 minutes. It's a 10% chance to get double fish. F tier. No fish is ever going to be 50k. On the other hand, the Broken Fishing Rod lasts up to 30 minutes, so it's worth having if you're going to be fishing at the deep sea fishing hut making it a solid C tier with the pulse core. The message in the bottle lets you pick any of the deep sea fishing boosts, but it's more expensive than the rest of the items. It'll go into D tier as it's essentially a more expensive broken fishing rod. The Dragonkin Lamp is about 48k XP in the skill of your choice if that skill has 99, which makes it about 5 GP per XP, very good for a prismatic skill, choice and gives you a good chance at the Effie pet. Alongside its effigy brother, it goes into S tier. Livid Plant is a must buy if you don't have the comp rec done. It gives on average 25,000 livid points, which is essentially an hour and a half of livid farm saved, and at the cost of 1 mil uh, GP, it's very cheap. It's an A tier because it's useless once you have the requirement done, as the extra produce points don't end up making a profit, but it would be S tier if the produce points were able to make profit or there is some use to it once you're done the requirement. Sacred Clay is an S tier item right away. It gives on average 105k bonus experience in a multitude of skills which is mostly gathering skills which are the I guess um, slowest skills in the game comparatively and at 600k cost this becomes 6 GP per XP which is way better than Treasure Hunter even if it's BXP. Shattered Anima, on the other hand, is so bad. It gives on average 1.25 mil anima, and if any of you have done Shattered Worlds, you'll know how little that is. It's only a couple minutes of work, so save yourself some GP and do the Shattered Worlds yourself. Slayer VIP tickets are a must-have with Slayer, as they make it really easy to only do high XP or high GP tasks while training Slayer. However, it's very easy to run out and this saves you doing Cabbage Face Punch Bonanza to get more tickets before going back to Slayer. This goes into the A tier again because it's kind of um, something that not everyone will use, but it's still very useful and if you're doing Slayer, you should buy it. The Tangled Fish Bowl gives you 5% XP in fishing for 3 minutes and when you break that down, even if you're getting 400k XP per hour, that's only 200 more XP, which works out to 25 GP per XP, and just way too expensive F tier. The map is a really weird one to rank, as we don't know the drop rate of the Tavius Fishing Rod, so we're unable to know whether it's worth it or not. 
Essentially how it works is that the map leads you to an uncharted island and on that island there's a chance that Tavia will be there and if she is you get her fishing rod which is worth about max cash. This makes it essentially a gamble where you don't know the odds and based on anecdotal experience I think it's not profit. And that's something I like to stay away from so for me it would be probably an F tier item but for others it might be an S tier item because that's where they get that rush. So I'm just going to put it in the middle at C tier as as it could be as it could be ranked pretty much anywhere depending on your cost tolerance. And last but certainly not least we have the unstable air room which gives 5000 rune sand points. This can be converted into 2000 unstable essence which can be used on DXP to gain 50 to 60 k XP or even more if you have bonus experience. This puts it in the same sort of 5 GP per XP area. Additionally, it helps skip the lower levels as the XP rune isn't that much lower at the lower level areas. So you can do something like buy the unstable air runes up until the next DXP, use it, and then you're at the point where you can do souls the rest of the way and you skip making all the lower cheaper runes. It's the weakest of the S tiers, but it's still an S tier item. So that's gonna do it for this video. I hope you enjoyed my tier list. I wanted this to be a little more educational, so I took more of my personal opinion out of it and put the ranks where I felt the average player uh, would want them to be. So the basis here was less opinionated and much more educational. So I just wanted to make that clear. If you enjoyed the video, drop a like, leave a comment down below if you disagree with any of my rankings, and drop a subscribe if you want to stick around for the next tier list. But past that, have a good day and I'll catch you in the next one.